At GCSE, a lot of you would have spent a lot of time looking at linear and quadratic graphs. Other than these classic two, there are a whole series of graphs out there, some of which you are required to have a rough idea about. These include cubic, reciprocal and exponential graphs. You may have heard of these three before, but today we are going to look specifically at cubics, and I will cover the other two in another video. So cubic graphs. Rather than the classic U or N shape like a quadratic, cubics have more of a wiggly S type shape. So as you can see here on our first page, Y equals X cubed. This is the most standard type of cubic graph you can get. Now, if we add some other variables in there, for example, some X squared values, some X values and an integer, you can see it changes a little bit. It still has its regular S shape, but by adding all these extra components to it, it does change the graph slightly. This is a good example of the general form of a cubic. You've got an x cubed, an x squared, an x, and a constant. And the coefficients of these will determine what the graph will look like. Notice both of these are examples of positive cubic graphs. So the graph starts in the bottom left, does its little wiggle, and end up in the top right. So both of these are exactly the same. You can probably guess a negative, on the other hand, is going to start from the top left, do the S shape, and then come down in the bottom right. This is another example of a cubic, but just a negative. OK, so now you're familiar with what they look like. A common GCSE question will involve just drawing them. Now, you've probably seen this table before, and these are, both, these are very, very useful, even when you get into A-level maths because you can draw almost anything just by substitution. So let's start here. We need to plot the cubic graph y equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus 1 between the values of minus 3 and 2. So I always like to start at the positive end because no one likes dealing with negatives. Positives are always going to be easier. So if we take our 2 and we substitute it into all the x values that we have here, so we have 2 cubed, which is 8, plus 3 lots of 2 squared, which is 4, plus another 2, minus 1. And that is going to give us our y coordinate. So y here is going to equal 8, plus 12 is 20, plus 2, minus 1. And we can see that's going to equal 21. So if we write this in here, I won't mark this one just yet because it's going to be all the way up here but let's have a look at our one value okay so let's do exactly the same but with one so y equals one cubed which is one plus three lots of one squared which is one again plus one minus one well straight away the plus one minus one is going to cancel so one plus three is going to give us four so our second point is going to be here so we can write four in there. Now let's move on to zero. A little trick for the zero, we know that whenever we multiply something by zero, it's going to make zero. So straight away, that's going to be zero, that's going to be zero, that's going to be zero, you're going to be left with minus one. So we can write minus one in there and go down to our graph and we can mark it. So zero minus one is going to be there. Now we get onto minus one. So again, substitute it in. Minus one cubed is minus one plus three lots of minus one squared because of the double negative rules it's just going to be one and then plus x so minus one there again and minus one again so minus one plus three is two minus one is one minus one again we're back to zero i'm just going to do the same for the last two quickly to save a bit of time here is our complete table all we have to do now is just plot on the last few points so minus two gives us one and minus 3 gives us 4, so there. And you can see the cubic kind of has its shape. So when it comes to drawing this, we just have to join up the dots roughly so that it's got a nice curve to it. Now, it's not going to be perfect every time, especially in an exam when you have to try and draw a curve by hand, but the exam boards are always going to be lenient with stuff like that because they understand it's pretty difficult to do. But thank you very much for watching. I hope that helped.